Howdy, it's Joe Buchanan again, and I just got back from a short uh, road trip where I went uh, up in the Chicago suburbs and picked up a couple of pieces of machinery that I bought on an online auction. So you'll be seeing these uh, in videos here in the future. But uh, number one here, I bought a Delta 6-inch carbide tool grinder, and it's on the nice cast iron pedestal. Not some cheap piece of angle iron or, or wooden base, but that you know the genuine uh, Delta Rockwell. They, they did a nice job uh, when they made this equipment, and this has got the six-inch uh, wheels. There's a green wheel on one end and a diamond wheel on the other, but green wheel's pretty well shot. I don't know about the diamond wheel, but I really have no interest in grinding carbide. I want to put a regular regular uh, silicon carbide wheel on there and. What I'm interested in doing is accurate grinding of uh, high-speed steel lathe tools. It has the reversing motor, so it'll go in either direction. Works good. Bought it sight unseen, 110 volt. You know, just for once in my, wife, my life, I, I wish I could buy a piece of equipment that already had a grounded plug on it. So that's the first thing I got to do before the safety Nazis attack me. I think it's an older piece of equipment from the looks of the trademarks, uh, possibly 40s or 50s, I'm not sure. This thing has a water pot on each end. I don't know if I'll ever use it. And believe it or not, they're too not too badly encrusted with niter, as I put it. Fairly clean, but Need a good cleaning out down here in the, uh, the the coolant trough. I've seen worse, but it it could use some cleaning. And those tables will tilt, as you can see here by the trunnions and the protractor on the end. So I can get any angle I want. And there's a groove there for the uh, uh, miter gauge. It's a little narrower than the standard delta. Uh, Miter gauge, but I have owned this for many, many years, and this is the grinding uh, dressing. <laughs> it is the dressing wheel. Uh, <laughs> let me start over. This is for dressing the grinding wheel, and it's a diamond tip, and this will fit in the groove right here. And can be moved back and forth, and you can feed it in here with uh, the diamond. You can feed the diamond in. I'm getting tongue-tied here, but there's a little knurled knob here to advance it and a thumb screw there to uh, tighten it. So that's my Delta grinder, and you will see that in the future. The second piece of equipment I bought is a 14-inch Shear Tomiko optical comparator. Why I bought this, I do not know, but my dad would say to me when I was a boy and I wanted something, you know how kids want things, and I'd say, uh, Dad, can I have so-and-so? And he'd say, you need that about as bad as a rabbit needs saddlebags. Well, I need this thing about as bad as a rabbit needs saddlebags, but hope to use it uh, in some demonstrations and uh, videos and uh, show you people a little bit about it. I'm not an expert on it uh, myself, they still make optical comparators. There's the Shear Tomiko trademark. These were made, I believe, in Minnesota, probably Minneapolis or St. Paul. Reminds me somewhat of a radar screen like uh, Kirk Douglas would be looking at in a movie. But the purpose of an optical comparator is to uh, uh, measure parts or uh, to inspect parts. And in fact, you're comparing the part with uh, the screen which has uh, measurements on it or a, a template, uh, an overlay. And, you know, there's a lot of different uses for these. They still make them, but the, the modern ones are, of course, all computer controlled and I think uh, very expensive. This has a light source on the top and as I was uh, driving 93 miles to pick it up, kind of dark up there, um, I was thinking, I wonder if the light bulb is burnt out in that thing. Well, sure enough, it is, and I don't think I can get a light bulb, and if I can find one, they are probably uh, 75 bucks or some outrageous amount. But for those that are interested in such a device, 
Made in USA, that's a, a novelty, isn't it? Real briefly, while I'm wired up and excited talking about this thing, uh, the light source is back here, and I temporarily have a high-powered flashlight back there, believe it or not, is what I'm using, and then there's a, a mirror or a prism or something here that uh, sends the light down here through a piece of glass on which the tool or the item that you're measuring or comparing sets. And here, for instance, is a 60-degree threading tool that I have on there. The light beam then goes through, and there are uh, two huge micrometer heads here that allow you to move it back and forth, one in an X and Y axis. And that crank I showed you allows you to focus because there isn't much of a field of vision on this, but then uh, back here, there's a lens, and I believe there are different kinds of sizes of lenses. This is just a 10 power right here, the tip of my finger, and the light beam again, and the silhouette goes down into a mirror and is reflected or refracted or whatever, and uh, there is the uh, threading tool I was talking about on the screen. There are a lot of other graduations on here that you cannot see, and, and uh, I'm going to crank that up and down now, and you can see how it goes in and out of focus. And uh, this thing uh, turns around, just, just does a lot of things. It's quite heavy, too, believe me. Had to move it twice. So that's enough for now on the Shure Tomiko. They made a lot of micrometers and other measuring devices too. Many of you are probably familiar with them. I think that they made a lot of uh, the Craftsman uh, precision tools. Not totally positive on that, but I think so from the looks of uh, the appearance of the tools. They were good tools. I have some Shure Tomiko micrometers. One more thing I want to show you. It has nothing to do with uh, this shopping trip, but uh, let's take a look anyway. For those of you that do not read and do not like books, uh, feel free to turn the video off at this point because I'm talking strictly about books. On the way to an auction uh, a few days ago, a few weeks ago, uh, there was a church book sale. Started at 8 o'clock. Well, I got there at 8.05 and there are already 20 people in there in the church basement, but I came upon a table that had automobile books and lots of them. And apparently I was the very first man anyway that uh, was digging through them because the boxes were all full. And I managed to buy myself a full summer's uh, reading of reading matter. So take a look what I got here. I'll, I'll run through it. 50 cents for paperbacks, you know. Uh, best of the old cars. Here's uh, the Fords uh, in the 30s. The Lincoln Motor Car. This is interesting. It's about the designers of automobiles. That's uh, Mr. Bugatti, I believe, there with the overcoat. They both got overcoats, don't they? Yeah, here's the Chilton Automotive Multi-Guide. The Lincoln Continental. That's a 50 cent book. Moving the Goods. All about old trucks. That's a neat book. Very neat. I'd have paid up to two dollars for that. Auburn's, Cords, and Duesenberg's. And I hope to go on a road trip with my buddy Dwight to the uh, Duesenberg Museum over in Indiana sometime within the next year. Road tests on the 62 cars. Well, a Fiat. Well, you know, those of you that uh, are experienced with Fiats in the, the early days of them uh, importing them into this country you knew that, you, well, you needed a manual when you owned one of those. Automobile trademarks. That's a 50 cent book. Let me move these aside and go through the balance of them here. Here's the American Truck Spotter's Guide from 1920 to 1970. That'll make some good reading. And here's the American Car Spotter's from 40 to 65. About a 5 8 inch thick book. Rolling Sculpture. And here's some thick ones. Encyclopedia of American Cars from 1930 to 1980. That'll make some good reading. Not in real good condition, the binding's falling apart. That was a dollar. These, these thick ones are still only a dollar. And here's Encyclopedia of American Cars from 
46 to 59. That's my favorite era. If you're 70, it's probably your favorite era too. And here's uh, Encyclopedia of America cars from 30 to 42. Well, for you younger guys, you're saying, well, what happened to 1943 through 1945? Well, those are the war years. They didn't make cars, so. That was a nice find. Then I talked to the man as I was checking out, and that was $15 worth, and I got some more in the house next to my bed. I'm reading one on the history of Offenhauser and uh, Fred Offenhauser. Mighty interesting reading. But uh, as I was checking out, giving the man $15, he said, yeah, you're the first one to look at those books today. He said, a, a member of our church died last winter, and I had to go over to his house and pick them up. He liked cars, he said. I felt like telling uh, this man, uh, you are a champion of the obvious. Okay, this is Tubal Cain saying so long for now. I hope you like this little tour, and you're going to see more of these machines in the future, and watch my 500 other videos.